Hey guys, I have here my server rack with a number of disk shelves that I use for Chia cryptocurrency farming. Now, if you follow Chia, you may know that there's new plot formats coming out, and one of those is the Gigahorse Plotter by Mad Max, and I'm working on replotting some of my drives currently to make use of that new plot format. As part of this, I'm taking a look at the disk organizational structure I have and how I can better improve on that. Currently, every drive in this rack is mounted as an individual disk in Linux. What I've been doing going forward is I'm taking groupings of eight disks and I'm making a RAID 0 array. That is a striped array across eight drives with no redundancy. Because we can plot incredibly fast now, the risk of losing a disk and having to rebuild an entire array is fairly minimal. Now an interesting conversation has come out of this, and that is that a RAID setup of eight drives in a RAID 0 would likely consume more power than if you were running those eight drives as individual disks. And if you think of how a RAID 0 works, that makes sense because every file is going to be striped across all of the disks. So anytime a file is read, you're going to see disk activity on all of your drives. It only makes sense. So at this point, I'm wondering exactly what is the difference? How much more power is being used in the RAID setup versus individual disks? And should I actually be sticking with individual disks? And I'd like to know this information as soon as possible, hopefully before I build out the entire rack and then realize I chose the wrong path. So that's the whole purpose of this video is we're going to compare the power consumption difference of an eight disk RAID 0 array versus eight individual drives under the exact same workload. So let's talk about our test setup and how we're actually going to measure the power consumption of these drives. Now, traditionally, most people will plug in a power meter such as this. Uh, this is a Kiyotech brand. Most people use a kilowatt or similar as a well-known brand. But for this particular test, I want to be as accurate as possible and eliminate as many variables as possible. That means I don't wanna to have to factor in things in my test such as fans or other drives or expansion cards or things that are not related to the specific block of drives themselves. And the best way to measure power that accurately is to use a DC shunt block. Now the DC shunt block is going to introduce a small amount of resistance and then it will calculate the voltage drop occurring across the shunt and then with that voltage drop and that resistance you can now calculate the amount of amperage going through the shunt and now that you know the amperage you can multiply that by the voltage to get the amount of power being consumed. Uh, so you'll see on my left here I have a block of drives. These are all 18 terabyte white label SAS drives that I purchased from the digital spaceport store. They are being powered by a Pico ATX power supply. The Pico power supply uses 12 volts DC and has a few DC-DC converters to produce the 5, 3.3, and other voltages that are needed. This is great because now we have one DC input which we can pass through to a shunt block. Uh, the shunt I'm using is part of the battery management system sold by Batrium. I'll be using a custom script written in Node.js to capture the data at approximately 1.5 second intervals, which is then transmitted and stored to a MySQL database. So the drives sitting here currently are individual disks mounted in Linux. Every drive is full of plots and we're currently farming under a normal workload. Now I want this test to be as accurate and precise as possible in terms of the two methods we are comparing. So I've started up this disk array. I started the Chia client so it is farming. I let it sit for a couple of hours and then after a couple of hours of normal farming I'm going to begin taking measurements. I'd like to get about five to six hours of data. Once I have all of that data captured I'm going to wipe all of these hard drives, rebuild this as an eight disk RAID 0 array, put the same number of plots back on the drive, start up the client, let it run, and gather another five to six hours of data. We'll then compare the two data sets to see what the power usage difference is. So yeah, it's probably going to take a day for the first test, probably a day or more to copy all the plots over once I rebuild it, and then a day or more for the second test, and then we'll be back to review the results. All right, guys, so the results are in finally. It's been about a week since I filmed the original introduction piece. Uh, it took quite a while to copy 131 terabytes of data. So what you're looking at here is the power consumption of the eight individual disks farming Chia for approximately six, uh, seven hours. We have seven hours of data collected. And you can see the average wattage over that time was 51 watts, which divided by eight drives gives us 6.4 watts per drive. And as I mentioned earlier, the data is being sampled at 1.5 second intervals. So the graph is kind of smashed together. It's kind of going up and down quite a bit. Uh, so we're just going to pick a random one hour block here and zoom in a little. And here you can see the line graph in a little more detail. Uh, it peaks and drops quite a bit throughout the farming process. So you can see the low parts are around 50.6 watts. And then we peak at approximately 52 watts. And you can see throughout the entire test there are quite a few drops like the one you see here. And I believe this is one of the drives going into idle mode or some sort of power saving state. 
I haven't done any of the uh, parameter changes on any of my drives to prevent them from spinning down or head parking or anything like that. But you can see throughout the duration of the test, we're spot on averaging right around the 51 watt mark. So next we're looking at the data collected from the rated set. So this is eight 18 terabyte drives in a RAID 0. And this array has the exact same file system, uh, the same file system parameters. So it's large file four with 0% reserved blocks. It has the exact same number of K32 plots, even though there was a bit of free space left over in the RAID version. Uh, that way I can make sure to get it as close to the same workload as possible. So in this test, I collected approximately six hours of data, and you can see the min-max spread here is quite a bit different from the individual disk layout. And throughout this test, we averaged 57 watts for the eight drives, which comes to 7.1 watts per drive. So it is a little bit more, not quite an entire watt, but it is a little bit more than the individual disk version. And you can see it averages, it averages around the 57, 56 mark here. And then there are quite a few drops down to 52. And I think the reason for the increased consumption is every time you read a file or a piece of a file, all eight of those drive heads have to flap back and forth, locating the pieces of that file. That's very different from if you read the file from one disk and there's only one drive head going back and forth. Now you have eight drive heads going back and forth or eight head apparatuses, right? Because one apparatus has more than one head if you want to be specific about it. Um, that armature, the armature is going back and forth because I know somebody's going to correct me on that if I don't clarify. So what may be happening here, and this is just a complete guess, is perhaps these drops are times when there was zero or one, you know, very few lookups that take place, as opposed to the average of anywhere from eight to 15 lookups I've been seeing. So the last graph I have here for you is what happens when you overlay the two methods with one another. So you can see the green is the RAID disks and the yellow is the uh, individual disks. So again, we'll zoom in, you know, about, grab about 45 minutes here. This is actually quite intriguing to look at here. But one thing to note too is how consistent this data is throughout the entire duration of the test. So I do feel this is a very accurate representation and a very fair comparison of the two drive layout methods. Next up, we'll do some basic pricing and uh, power consumption analysis on this data. So I've got the 8x18 individual disks and the 8x18 RAID disks. And that is broken down to 6.375 watts for individual disks and 7.125 watts for RAID disks. And then you can see the calculations here in kilowatt hours per year between the two methods. So the RAID method is consuming an additional 52 kilowatt hours for eight drives over the course of one year. So if we take into consideration my current power price of approximately 17 cents per kilowatt hour, uh, so we're looking at an average cost of $76 per year to operate the individual drives versus an average cost of $85 per year to operate the rated drives. That's a difference of $9 per year in power consumption. So I have 112 drives between the four JBOD disk shelf enclosures. I'm looking at a cost of $1,063 to operate these 112 drives over the course of a year, or $1,188 to operate the 112 drives in RAID 0 mode. That's a difference of $125 per year. Now hopefully this continues to operate, you know, eight, 10 years. If I'm looking at 10 years of operating this, that's a far stretch. We're looking at $1,250 difference. That is quite a difference. Now, if you're like some others in the community and maybe you have an entire rack of NetApp DE 6600s, eight of those DE 6600 enclosures will hold 480 drives. At my power cost, you're looking at $4,456 versus $5,093. That's a difference of $536. Again, if you're looking at the eight to 10 year time span, 10 year difference, uh, is $5,360 over the course of 10 years. So in my personal opinion, every bit you can save in an operation like this is very important, especially when you're looking at the long picture, the long timeline far out 10 years or more. Now, each of these methods have pros and cons that make it you know, something to consider. So for the RAID method, you have a significantly fast write speed. And we're turning out these plots anywhere from two minutes. I'm doing K33s in six minutes. And that's a lot of data to offload quickly. And the RAID method allows me to do that very quickly from memory using the RAID as the temp or the final directory and not have to have any intermediary SSD flash storage. And that's a savings in terms of money for the flash storage and you know, you're not wasting drives. If I use individual drives, I can offload quickly using merger FS to distribute those plots between multiple drives. However, I still need an intermediary SSD for offloading from the plotter before they can be moved to the final drives. An additional pro of the RAID setup is you're using the extra space that's left over at the end of the drive. Now, in my setup of eight 18 terabyte drives, that leaves me with approximately 310 terabytes of free space, which I can fit an additional three K32 plots using the original uncompressed plot mode. 
And yes, you can fit additional plots, but that's not really making up for the cost difference of power in my opinion. Some pros of the individual drive setup, you have less power cost, obviously, as we've established. Additionally, you have less to replot if a drive fails. If a drive fails in the individual method, all you have to replot is the one failed drive. If you have RAID 0 sets of 8 drives, you have to replot the entire RAID of 8 drives if one of those drives fail. And then I'll add just a pro for each of these is management, because they both have very different ways of managing them. Individual drives are very easy to manage in Linux, but you have a lot of mount points. RAID 0 gives you less mount points, but it becomes very difficult to coordinate, you know, which drive is in which array and which slot in the enclosure that's in, and trying to locate individual drives as parts of arrays. Maybe the management leans in favor of the single drive method. So my personal decision is I will be moving forward with individual drives. I'm going to abandon the RAID 0 idea because the important parts to me are the lower power cost and the ease of locating a particular individual drive in your shelf of drives. And before we go, there's one last thing to consider in all of this, and that is the reducing plot filter. We're currently at a filter of 1 to 512, and that's supposed to be dropping to 1 to 256. With that drop, we'll now see two times the plots passing filters. That's two times the read, two times the IO operations on your drive. I suspect those differences in power consumption will continue to move closer and closer together. I do think individual drives is always going to be cheaper from a cost perspective, but I don't think the differences will be as noticeable at a 256 plot filter or a 128 plot filter. Anyway, I think I've rambled on long enough about power consumption of drives. Please hit that like button before you go. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave those as well. And thank you very much for watching.